So what's great about this system is that the slide is actually all computer controlled and it remembers every single cut and um, element that you add to the slide. So you can number your, uh, your sections with this button here, it says number on and off. You can calculate the area that you're actually launching. And this is really nice in case you need to have a, a minimum amount of tissue. So if you're doing like a metabolomic profile, you need so much you know, weight of tissue. You can actually measure that, um, that area. You can use a ruler. This could be for imaging uh, so that you have something that you can set down and see if you need a, a certain amount of um, square microns. Uh, you could use that. This little A here allows you to add text so that when you come back to your slide, you can take the, you can look at an image and say, you know, this was something that you um, flagged as being something special. So let's select the element area, which is kind of this two half circles. It's the third button from the left. And then select our freehand draw. We're going to make our little area around our xylem. You'll notice it kind of shades in calculating area. You'll notice it says number 48. That's, our, that's our, the number of cuts that we've done so far today. And then close cut and auto LPC. And that make sure that we're doing it um, correctly. Move our slide into place if we have one. Or, I'm sorry. Move our tube into place if you have one ready. Change our magnification to 40 so that we know we get everything blasted out of there. And we know that the area that we're about to cut is 15,464 micrometers squared. Now when it's cutting, you'll notice that this UVA light turns kind of a blue-green color. If that's not coming on, it means that your laser isn't powered on. So check to see if the red or green light is illuminated on the laser power box located right behind the screen. As you can see it's cutting, it's doing the pressure catapulting, Oops. and it records the area that we cut with the actual square area recorded. And it's still there. So if you're cutting and you feel like it's not pressure catapulting enough, or if as it's cutting you're burning a really large area, more so than you think it needs to, these controls here will control the energy behind the cut on the left or the pressure catapult on the right so you can bring it up or down. Usually whatever the default setting in is is pretty good. Up here you have your usual save buttons which you can do in the file pull down menu as well. If you have elements that you've saved, say you're doing the same experiment over and over with similar tissues, you could save elements and then just reload them. You could save the image of what is on the screen that you're cutting, or you can print them, but we don't have a printer hooked up right now. Moving allows you to stop the stage from moving, or continue, or stop a laser cutting from occurring, or continue it, kind of like pause and play. You can go to your checkpoint, which is where the stage moves all the way over so that you can load slides into it. You can go to elements that you had set up before, so if I say go to my last element, it'll move the stage back to the last element that I, I told it to, to cut for me. Now these are all available here. The more, most important ones are available on this icon bar here. So if you want to go to the previous element or the next element, you can use these buttons. This list is your element list. This is actually really nice. Um, it tells you the shapes that you've drawn, um, if it's 
it's a rectangle with freehand circle, um, how many cuts and how many shots were done, and it tells you the area. If you need to calculate at the end, you can export all of this into a spreadsheet. It also tells you the setup for each slide. So right now we have three slides loaded onto the stage. We haven't made any cuts to slide one or three, and everything's been on, done on slide one, two right now. You can look down at the bottom, kind of in the middle, the very bottom, you can see which slide you actually have loaded right now. And if you move over rather quickly, you can watch this slide go. And it knows that we've moved onto slide one. Like I said before, it remembers all of this information. Um, if you want to take a picture, you would just click on this little camera button up here and save it like you would any other file. So when you've finished all your experiments for the day, go to the little eye icon, the checkpoint icon, and that will move the stage away, and you can gently remove your slides. Careful not to break them. If you plan on reusing them, store them back on ice. Now we're ready to shut down the system. First we want to return the stage to its original position. When the stage is moved back into place, turn off the program by clicking the X button in the right corner. That shuts down the microscope. And then we're going to go back here and turn off the filters. We'll turn off the laser power by turning the key. And then we'll turn off the entire setup and then the fluorescent light. There's no need to turn off the power on the actual microscope. Leave that toggle switch in place. When you're done, you can shut down the computer, turning off. Make sure you've saved any images if you want to. Try not to leave them on this hard drive. And you're ready to cover it up.